Hi everybody, and in this video, what I want to do is I want to discuss a problem that relates to uh, rates of change and logarithms. So here's a good question, kind of is based off of a real world concept. Uh, I'll read it out here. It says, as a tornado moves, its speed increases. The function s of d equals 93 log d plus 65 relates the speed of the wind s in miles per hour near the center of a tornado to the distance that the tornado has traveled d in miles. So in other words, what we're saying is the d is along the horizontal axis and s of d the speed as a function of distance is along the vertical axis. Um, so that is the graph that is produced when you graph this relationship on Desmos. Okay, so take a minute to look at that graph and um, decide upon what it tells you, if anything. Okay, so that's the speed of the wind in the tornado as a function of the distance that the actual tornado has traveled. Okay. All right, so the first question that asks though is to calculate the average rate of change for the speed of the wind at the center of the tornado from mile 10 to mile 100. So what we're trying to figure out is on average, at what rate is the speed at the center of the tornado in terms of its wind, at what rate is that wind speed increasing uh, per mile over the distance of the 10th mile to the 100th mile traveled? So if we're going to do that, what we need to do is we need to figure out the following. We need to figure out M sub A for average is equal to S of 100 minus s of 10 divided by 100 minus 10, right? That's uh, the average slope calculation. And so what does s of 100 equal? Well, if we plug 100 into our formula, what we get is the log base 10 of 100, which is 2. And then we times that by 93. Okay, and then we add, oops, sorry, we add, just going back to our formula here, uh, we add 65 to it. So plus 65, that gives us 251. So what is that telling us? It's telling us uh, actually that when the tornado has traveled 100 miles on the ground, the speed at its center would be approximately 251 miles per hour, which is very fast. Uh, I don't know if that's possible, but anyway, that's what it is. And what is S of 10? Well, S of 10 is the log of 10, which is 1, times 93, plus 65, and that equals 158. Okay, so that tells us that when the tornado has traveled 10 miles along the ground, that its um, speed is at about 158 miles per hour. And 100 minus 10 is 90. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and figure that out and we'll do 251 minus 158 divided by 90 and that equals 1.03, oops, let's make sure we clear that up, hang on here. That equals 1.03 um, K repeat, 1.03 repeat. Um, and, what, and what is that saying? Well, 1.03 miles per mile traveled. Um, so in other words, it's the change in Y, the change in Y over the change in X, where Y represents the change in the wind speed and x represents the change in the distance by the tornado traveled. So what we can say then, uh, our concluding statement for that first part would be, therefore, uh, from mile 10 to 100, on average, 
the rate of change in the wind speed of the tornado is 1.3 miles per hour per mile traveled. Okay, so uh, on average, from the as the tornado travels from um, you know the tenth mile to the one hundredth mile, on average, the speed is increasing by one mile per hour. The speed of the wind at the center is increasing by one mile per hour for every mile, or 1.03 miles per hour for every mile traveled. And um, that's fine. I mean, that's that's what it is. And you know, we we have to just uh, basically go with that for the moment. Fair enough. Now. Um, the next thing that we want to look at is, and you might say, well, how do, is maybe just the graph of that, right? Um, well, if you look at the graph of that, uh, what you could do is you could say, um, you could look at the graph and say, well, where is S of 100? Well, S of 100 is right around here, right? And S of 10 is somewhere down here, right? And so the slope of this line, the slope of that line um, would be the slope of the average function at that point. <clears throat> okay. And um, when you when you look at it that way, right? Uh, it may look a little bit steep, but that's probably just to do with the scale of the graph because we're not capturing uh, very well the space on the graph between 50 and 0. So it looks a little bit steeper than it actually is, okay? See, because you notice on the y-axis that it stops at 50, but there's another amount of space. Like, I, I had to cut off the screen where uh, y equals 50, but in actuality, 10 might, you know, be down here, in which case the graph would not look so steep, okay? So anyway, what the, what's being referred to then is the slope of the graph uh, between those two points, which approximately would be uh, close to 1, okay? So with that being said, uh, what's the next question? Well, the next question is as follows. It says, estimate... Um, the rate at which the speed at the wind of the center of the tornado is changing at the moment it has traveled its 10th mile and its 100th mile. Well, we won't, we won't do both of those. Let's just do the 10th mile, okay? So what we're being asked to do is figure out the instantaneous rate of change. In other words, at what rate is the um, speed at the center of the tornado changing at the 10th mile? So we know from uh, a little bit of previous work that we did up here, that uh, S of 10 is equal to 158, right? S of 10 is equal to 158. And I should also actually say that if, if we went back there, S of 10 is a 158. Um, you can also see one of the mistakes I made when I was drawing my graph. Uh, I hope you noticed it. And I, I just realized that I made the mistake too, is that when I was drawing my graph, I should have S of 10, what I would do is I would find 10 here and go up to the graph, which is right about there. So in actuality, my, my secant line should have gone like that. Okay, sorry, I apologize for the slowness, but it should have gone like that because S of 10 was 158. For some reason, I was, I was uh, putting in 10 for Y, but I should have been putting 10 in for X. So I do apologize about that, but yeah, the, the mistake has been corrected now. So we'll just move on and pretend we didn't happen. Um, but in any event, let's go down here now and let's um, take a look at the situation, right? They're asking for the rate at which the speed at the center of the tornado is changing at the 10th mile. So I already know what S of 10 is. S of 10, we have determined to equal 158. And now to get an approximation of the instantaneous rate of change, what I need to do is I need to figure out um, S of 10.001. So let's do that. S of 10.001. 
And what does that equal? Well, it means we take the log of 10.001, we times it by 93, and we add 65, and we get 158.0040387, which I will store on my calculator. Okay, and now our instantaneous rate of change will equal approximately S of 10.001. My computer is really lagging, so I do apologize about this. Okay, bracket minus S of 10 all over 10.001 minus 10, okay, 10.001 minus 10. And let's just figure that out. Okay, so that will give us an answer of 4.03, approximately. In fact, I'll, re I'll, I'll, I'll round it to 4.04. So what does that tell us? It means that at the 10th mile that the tornado has traveled, its wind speed is increasing by approximately a rate of 4.04 miles per hour per mile that the, that the tornado has traveled, okay? So at the instant when the tornado has traveled 10 miles, its wind speed, once again, is increasing at a rate of 4.04 miles per hour per mile that the whole tornado has traveled. A Little bit of a confusing interpretation, but that is the correct interpretation. And now the final question here is, use your graph to discuss how the rate at, at which the speed of the wind at the center of the tornado changes as the distance increases. So. What we see is clearly from the graph, as the distance traveled goes up, okay, as we go further to the right, the speed of the tornado goes up as well. It keeps going up, but it goes up at a decreasing rate. So it still continues to increase, but you can see that the slope of the line does not get steeper and steeper. It kind of levels off. So our answer to that question is, uh, as the tornado um, travels, the speed at the center of the tornado increases, but it does so at a decreasing rate. Okay, thanks for watching. Sorry about that little mistake. Uh, I hope you learned something though from this video.